Torej zdaj se pa selimo na iz vseh angleških primerov na dve lokalni slovenski vagoni znamki. Jaz sicer najprej bo ti na kranj. Boli se čar? Ne. Tako da izvoljim ti, no. Super. Potrovljeni, moje ime je Tina, izdelujem lesene izdelke iz slovenskega lesa. Govorila bom o greščini, sekunda. Kaj že gre to? E, pet? E, pet. Juška? Samo to? So I'm going to switch to English now. Uh, I'm going to talk uh, about who we are, what we do, how we started, and where, where we are going today and tomorrow and next week. So moi, we are a very small company based in Maribor. We have our own shop. Most, uh, mostly we still sell online, but our shop is in Slovenska Street. Slovenska ulica, and the wooden bicycle that is also here today is parked in front of the shop, so you can see it, and go there to shop uh, to buy some presents. So uh, at the moment, our wooden handbags are the most important product. I'm gonna talk uh, later more about them. We just, uh, I just returned from New York Fashion Week. I was invited there to present my brand and to present my handbags. Uh, so Marco, He's not a model, he's my boyfriend, but also my producer. <laughs> uh, but uh, actually he has uh, his own job, because he loves to work as a civil engineer. So he makes skyscrapers, bridges, um, he's building a lot of things in Switzerland, but then in the free time he has to do my wedding <laughs> Um That's me, I studied economics. It was, it was really important for me to study abroad. So I learned uh, Italian in Italy while studying there. Then I went to UK, I lived in Scotland for some time, and uh, later in Lithuania, and I did my master's in Vienna. Um, it all started with a wooden bicycle. You can go later uh, to check it. The wood is from our farm, so it's really important for me to use something that is actually in Maribor. You can find uh, just 10 minutes from here. Uh, this is a uh, walnut wood. And this is uh, the wood that we buy, I'm going to explain later. Uh, it all started with an old bicycle that I got as a present, and we couldn't fix it. We needed one part, uh, and it was not found, it was not manufactured anymore, so we did a wooden part of that bicycle. And then we said, why not to do the whole bicycle? It took around one year to develop it. I didn't know that I'm going to have a company, I just started to work. And then we did the part of the bicycle, we tested, it was really bad. Then we did more and more and more. In the end, I had the whole bicycle made. Um, we asked some newspapers, some television people to come with us from mm, Quela. It's the English, like uh, uh, where the river comes out. Source, Source uh, of Drava River. And we cycled back to Maribor. We got some sponsorships with the wooden bicycles. It took us uh, one week and it was great fun. <laughs> Nothing happened with the bicycle, we survived. Uh, and that's how my company actually started. I never had an idea I'm gonna have a company. I didn't know that I'm gonna sell any products or I thought I'm gonna have a normal job. But now I have moi. <laughs> so uh, we sell mostly to Germany. Then we sell a lot to Austria. Uh, why Austria? Because I'm uh, going to international markets all the time in Austria. That's Graz, Vienna, Salzburg. So I'm traveling a lot over the weekends. Next week uh, I'm going to Blickfunk. It's really important international uh, market in uh, Vienna. And uh, later uh, customers come to our website and they buy our stuff, of course. Uh, I make, uh, I studied marketing in Vienna. So uh, mostly I sell through Instagram. When I, I have now a, wooden, um, a new handbag, and I just <coughs> posted it on Instagram, and I already sell three. For example, in like 10 minutes, I sell three of them, and then I continue. I have a good photographer that makes great photos. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, that's important for us. Uh, Facebook is mostly for Slovenian people, because they use it more. Uh, I think uh, Austrian people don't look for us there. And I'm always available at um, our email. Uh, so, tomorrow, uh, yeah, yesterday, I was in New York, <laughs> this September. They invited me uh, earlier this year to join some fashion week uh, shows, um, some uh, events at the New York State University. 
For me, it was really incredible that they found me on Instagram and they invited me. They even paid my uh, plane ticket to go there. And uh, it was incredible. I don't know. I'm going back probably in February to sell more. Uh, they told me already before to put the prices up. So I had this handbag here is 80 euros, but there it was more than 400 dollars because they don't buy it if it's cheap. They think it's from China or that is not made. They really value our products if they're more expensive. So probably this is gonna be more expensive in Slovenia too. <laughs> Today you have it there for this price, but yeah, uh, I'm gonna keep the price is up. Um, that's it. Yeah, I have to decide now if I want to work because I'm doing a lot in the um, Austrian market. I have some uh, shops there that sell my stuff. I have some representers. But now I have to kind of decide if I also want to go to the United States. It's a big market and it's, it's hard to travel there. I have to stay there and I have my own shop here, my own business, my production. So I have some decisions to make. Uh, yeah, I wanted to show you. This is my first wooden handbag. I took my um, grandmother's telephone to uh, make good measurements how it should look, how it big should it should be, so it's too small. This was what I made first because my grandmother still has the old mobile and I never thought that our mobiles are bigger. So for example, this is how we test our products, how we uh, manufacture them. Uh, yeah, so now they're bigger there. And uh, today it's a Borshnikovo Srechani letter. So for example, this is a perfect bag that you should wear tonight. <laughs> Questions? Uh, no, we have uh, questions later together with uh, Maya and Alenka. No? So, um, so this is Smith to Meet, uh, another Slovenian brand. Uh, what? Uh, no, we don't have a okay. We will have a live presentation. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. okay. Um, Ja, torej zdaj, od Tina in uh, Smetu Med, so Tina Morja tam, v zelo kakšno let, uh, da bi špeg lahko tudi 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 noč in se konc zaročen, so te forme se ne zdaj. So, hi. Um, my name is Alinka. And I'm Maja, hi. Uh, and uh, we are Smetu Med, and we have a sort of amphibian organization, uh, which is part NGO, and part social enterprise. Uh, we educate about sustainability, about um, um, different kinds of uh, solutions that are, um, or circular economy or uh, zero waste, things like that. And we also make products out of waste materials, materials like these bags. Um, so we basically are an organization that um, will be the most happy when it goes out of business, of course. When we won't have any garbage left to use for our products, then we'll yeah. accomplish our goal. <laughs> Not to have waste in the world anymore. So. Um, in the meanwhile, we still have a lot of work to do, <coughs> I, I'm afraid. Um, but then, um, as, like, as we started, which was to, in 2007 and the, and the, as an NGO, for us the focus was always waste. How could we raise awareness on the problem of waste? And then we started very much by doing workshops and having exhibitions, talks and stuff like this. And over the years there were basically two challenges. Uh, one was kind of like we always preached about solutions, kind of like, oh yeah, we should do this, we should do this, we should do this to the people and kind of felt unfair, always just saying how it should be. And the, the second thing is was basically that um, 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 applying for grants was harder and harder for us. Plus we felt kind of like, um, in, in a sense, kind of like, okay, now we have to decide. We all have some extra jobs on the side. And came, this moment came, well, it was just too much of everything. And we decided, okay, why not switch into being producers as well, kind of like full-time producers. So this is when we decided then to uh, start a business. And we um, are now a social enterprise as well. And boy, I have to say, our work changed a lot. So <laughs> it definitely is not the same, just being an NGO and applying for grants and being on the market. So this was like the main thing we wanted to talk about, like the challenges that this brings uh, and what we learned. Yeah, we really had to like um, change the way we did things when we started to um, 
do the business in like really business way, not like before as we thought we are doing business and then we didn't even know what cash flow is <laughs> and what like uh, really basic things are. So um, uh, realizing that we don't know so much stuff <clears throat> um, was the reason that we um, decided that we have to educate ourselves about it. Uh, so we um, uh, applied for some um, uh, programs that were meant for um, social enterprises to educate themselves about the business part of the. And what we got from these um, uh, programs is not just like the like hardcore knowledge about uh, things that we had to know, but also a great community. And this is the most valuable thing that I think that we got from it. So these are people that we can call anytime, asking them about the prices, uh, how to um, talk with this or the other client, or things like that. Um, so yes, this was really, really a step forward for us. <laughs> um, one switch we also make, which was basically a, an opportunity, I would say we seized in a sense, was that like we started working uh, more and more with um, businesses, meaning B2B work. Uh, so now I would say like more than half of our revenue or three quarters of selling the products is through organizations. Like we sell to the businesses, um, to some uh, organizations, uh, the, the, and this is kind of like, usually it comes with, I don't know, their name, their name, logo, something on it. And in a sense, this for us was like, we realized was a really good step. Mm. And so, this, yeah. yeah, we basically take uh, the waste materials from uh, the company and we make like beautifully designed uh, things with added value and we sell the garbage back to them. <laughs> <laughs> well, what we like to say nowadays is that our, each of our products in a sense is um, like it's kind of like a messenger for us. So kind of like the values we have we kind of pack in the bags. Yeah. So kind of in the end this at the end of the day for us is really strong. One of the uh, really important one of the things we learned is for example that you really have to stick to what you're doing in a sense. There were very let's say there were many opportunities where we could kind of like earn quite a lot of money but then it wouldn't be fair because it wouldn't kind of like be um, according to our values. And on the long run, I think this is a suicide. So we really try to do like things really sincere and really watch out on what it is. Is it something that we say yes to, or is it something that's mm, yeah. a little and bit more And to shady. communicate it in a really like nice uh, manner, you know, not to say like, oh, we know this so much better, and you are a shitty company because you're doing that. But it's like this is. What, where we are coming from and this is important for us and like we really appreciate that you are doing that and please contact us and this is the information behind it and this like please um, contact us if you have any other questions things like that for example like a company contact us because they wanted to have a campaign about um, Tetra Pak water, uh, uh, wo like water um, yeah. in Tetra Pak uh, packaging. packaging, yeah. And since in Slovenia Tetra Pak is even less sustainable than classic plastic bottles, we said like, this is the thing here, so we don't stand behind it, but next time please contact us and we can make something out of it before you put the water into the... Uh, Packaging. Uh, so yeah, and they were so nice towards us, and um, yeah, this is I think the way with kindness and with like openness to approach the things. Um, so yeah, we mostly sell to Slovenian market, like ninety percent. Um, then the rest is people who find us on our website through our web shop. So this is where we kindly um, uh, uh, send products as well abroad. But then on the long run, I, I would really like us to expand. So first is the European markets, definitely, mm -hmm. because they're most accessible in a sense. 
uh, we know there's more fierce competition. And the, the one thing we always are stuck with is then the pricing. For us, this is a really tough um, topic always, pricing, pricing. And one thing that's really odd about, like we had tons and tons of mentors, uh, different kinds, some we still are in very good relations, but then sometimes you would feel, see mentors kind of like advising you just the opposite things. You would have two mentors, mm. and one would say, oh, definitely go in this direction, and the other would say, definitely go in this direction. <laughs> and at the end of the day, it's really you who are stuck there yeah. with how to decide. And this is the time where I think if your values are really strong, and if you, yes, take a step back, and for us, I think it's easier because there's two of us, then we really kind of have to decide. Um, and it's not just intuition, but kind of like, yes, all the knowledge and how, what do we, what does it say? You know, what does it everything say? And then, yeah, you just decide something and go on. And then you kind of like change it a little. And in terms of products, we get the materials from different kind of companies. If we do, um, if we make products for a company that wants to them to us to use the, their own material, we of course use their own material. But we also get materials from like companies for these bags, for example, that print the tarps or they, um, uh, for example, these tarps are also on um, garbage trucks um, the, that uh, change the trucks and things like that. And um, one of the companies that does this is also Freitag. It's one of the first in Switzerland. Uh, but we d what we do differently is that we really use like more than 90% waste materials for our bags. So when they are over with, um, with usage, that when they are not usable anymore, then they are really um, easily to um, put it apart uh, in different, uh, uh, put apart the different materials and really use things again if it's possible or if it's not. We uh, encourage people um, to buy a new one from us, or we can repair it uh, for free anytime. Yeah. So. And at the end of the day, we really believe in drinking coffee, lots of it, okay. <laughs> and especially in the company on the sun. This is where yeah. most of our ideas come from. Yeah. So this is what we <laughs> said to Caroline when she was asking, like, um, how how much uh, different kinds of work you do. It's like. 50% uh, is bureaucracy, 40% is logistics, like 9% is creativity, and 1% is coffee for sure. <laughs> so, yeah. um, uh, we have these bags here. You can uh, buy it here, or you can buy it also in our web shop or in some shops, even in Maribor, I think. Um, so, yeah, I think well, our. Yeah. Ten minutes are yeah. over. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is um, are we it's now sitting, sitting together? No, no, no. Okay. 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 so much that's really really um, inspiring I think uh, to sort of like hear how um, strong your businesses are and um, how much you've learned um, from your businesses but I think I'm hearing quite a common thread which is pricing mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's quite a challenge for um, a lot of uh, makers especially individuals valuing what you do and uh, I have a lot of conversations with uh, makers in the UK of um, you are not your own buyer um, and so it, it's sort of that perception of value on your products um, and maybe if we sort of delve in a little bit deeper into the, the big pricing question of um, <coughs> are the Obviously, Tina, you've just come back from New York and sort of um, had conversations with the marketplace over there. Um, do you think that that can be easily translated into Europe? What are your sort of thinking? You've touched on that. I would rather stay here inside in Europe. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. 
because it's completely different market and if I do it in the United States then I'm going to do it there. Then yeah. I have to be there and stay there and do it there or I stay here and it's quite easier for me to travel, to know the people, the culture and everything else. Yeah. So I'm going to focus, probably, yeah. I think decide, but I'm going to focus on Europe yeah. for now. Yeah. Yeah. And um, with that sort of price margin though, do you think that um, you can, I suppose, raise that level to sort of have that better cash flow? I know you were sort of talking about that. I always have problems with prices. With, yeah, because if I, I go to Vienna and my prices are a bit higher than here in my shop, because if I have the same price here at my shop, people come and they scream at me, oh, what do you think you are? You can't sell for this price. Da, da, da. But then if I go to Vienna with this price, nobody will buy it. Uh, and now I even figured it out that uh, people from Graz are driving to Maribor to buy cheaper uh, <laughs> uh, my bags. So in the end, I know that I will have to have a bit lower for Vienna people price and a bit higher for Slovenian people. So yeah. like in the middle, I'm going to have to find some. Yeah, it's hard to I don't know yet. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Open book on that yeah. one. <laughs> um, so, um, uh, Alenka, with the, the work that you both do with uh, Smash and Mitch, it's, um you were talking about this sort of enthusiasm that you get with companies, that 90% of your work um, comes from companies. Um, I'm sort of hearing kind of like uh, how you value customer service um, and that kind of repair, reuse and um, solution focused, mm -hmm. um, is this an area that um, you feel like is resolved maybe with that customer service or can you add value to that? I don't know, I'm sure if I understand the question. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, no, that's right. Um, so I think, if I think there's scope yeah. Yeah. to sort of add value to the work that you do okay. within the pricing point uh, because people give a lot to customer service mm -hmm. and and I'm, I suppose the question is um, how much value do you put on the customer service that mm -hmm. you provide? Okay, okay. Um, I think like for us the, the funny thing is like we like to joke that our um, like the biggest concentration of our products is usually on climate protests mm -hmm. or on Grossman Film Festival and some other charity <laughs> festivals. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Like, um, so it's like of course we don't know all the people who buy our bags, but usually yes. Like very many people, what we realized, would contact us directly and they say like, oh, I see the bags on the website, but I would like exactly this in this color or in this, like, so we value this a lot. We realized, okay, our bags, part of the, the thrill is also the fact that they are very unique. Mm -hmm. Each bag is unique in a sense. Mm -hmm. So this, we really try to come forward as much as possible, depending on, on, the, uh, on the material we have at the moment. But then, yes, we really try to do this kind of like, yeah. Um, do custom made yeah. a yeah. lot plus yes we always give discount to the people who would bring back our bags after three three years of constant use and we always feel like this for us is such a like I really feel always like okay somehow if I made something right this is the thing I made right so we always would offer like 50% discount for them to buy another bag which they usually do so it's kind of in this end and we always repair it. This is for free, we have a guarantee that's the kind of like repairments for free lifetime, which we feel really kind of like, we cannot s talk about sustainability and then make rubbish yeah. stuff. And we just had like one girl came with a bag, it, it was really like devoured. <laughs> and we were like, oh, this is beyond reparation. <laughs> Maybe you should have another one. And she said, yes, I will buy a new one, but please, can you repair me this one too? And we were like, yes, of course we can do it. <laughs> uh, but with companies, it's the other way around. They would like to have like something that they can predict very straightforward and we um, we do that too. Yeah. <laughs> and it's always this question of okay so if you start selling more outside of Slovenia what does it mean like you know we kind of like there's very few bags that would come back for reparation but still you know how can we still offer this service of free repairs to everybody even with people from England providing it. Yeah. So that's an open topic really. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm.
Could you expand to working in collaboration? I mm -hmm. guess that would maybe be the answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you have challenges over um, if people want certain colours um, or certain ideals? And obviously, you're only working with the materials that you can source. Yeah, yeah constantly. Just, uh, yeah. Like, just constantly. In, in, at this moment, we are working for a conference uh, that one of the ministries is organising. And they have um, their own like um, uh, design of the conference. And we were like, OK, primary colors, we can do that. And now the designer contacted us. And he said, like, uh, so much of this and so much of this. And I need uh, these shapes and this and this. And it's like, OK, these are waste materials. This is a, mm, mm, something completely different, you know? It's not that you can choose how much of which thing, but it's also what you can supply at that moment, and it, it's not, it doesn't depend on you so much. It's also about the companies that give you the materials, and you never know what you're go going to get. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's a different kind of design process also, yeah. not just, uh, just uh, you know, what you can order, but you, you have to think about changes and um, different um, qualities of the materials and how you can, um, via design, um, uh, bridge that, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. That, yeah. yeah, plus it's the colors. It's like we really like the, 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 the part where it's people would usually, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. it happened to us so many times, like people would come to us, approach us and say, oh, we really love you. It's like everything's so colorful with you. We really love your bags. They're so full of colors. Do you have this in black? <laughs> <laughs> like 90 plus percent of people would like our bag in black, whereas black tarp is not her usual. It's kind of like hard to um, get it, and the, the um, cutoffs, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the, that kind of like communication, I yeah. imagine, it's, is it, fundamental. It's fundamental, also <coughs> with uh, the people who provide us the waste materials. Yeah. It's also like a personal relationship. It's, yeah. it's never like, give us that, but it's like, oh, hi, I'm, this is who I am, and I understand your position. How can we make that work that it's not, you know, giving you, uh, uh, gi giving us your waste materials will not complicate things for you too much, and, you know, know, know the personal stuff about them and ask them how they are and things like that. It's, yeah. it's really important. Yeah. yeah. So, Tina, do you find that you get asked to do very specific things. Um, yeah, it's hard because I have photos and everywhere of my products and people want the same wooden pattern as they see on the phone. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they, they get the product at home and they go, oh, it's not the same, same. But I try to explain it makes you unique. So yes. Yeah. 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 And um, how much of your work is I suppose, do people just buy the products or do they want commissioned pieces, like specific bag and certain shape or size, or, or do you not work to commission? Uh, you mean like in the shops? Yeah. yeah. Uh, in the abroad, they have to pay it in advance, buy yeah. it, but in Slovenia, everybody works on commission. So oh, I meant um, uh, if somebody asks for um, their own design, could you do that? Uh, okay. People have many ideas. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> they come every day, yeah. and they want a lot of things. Okay. I already, yeah. I say no usually <laughs> because I don't have time. And in Slovenia, they want very special design, whatever, but they don't want to pay more. Mm. Okay. They're like, it's the same price, right? And I'm like, no, it's like triple the price, and then they just disappear. So usually if I don't want to work on something, I give a really uh, high price <laughs> and then people say no or they say yes and I make more money. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah. like that solution. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have time to go. Yeah, yeah we, we have that uh, very similar approach. Yeah. And, 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 and the one to do is the price is really high. Wishes are really something sometimes. <laughs> well, sometimes it can be very <laughs> lucrative. Um, you would, uh, both of you are sort of getting that sense of values in what you do um, and, and I should imagine with uh, quite challenging trying to sort of constantly bring across that message of the value behind you know, sustainable products 
because um, you're both coming from the same thing, even the raw material and waste material, but it's still about that journey of that material. Um, how do you, I, I suppose, present those values? How do you keep that message alive? Where, which channels? I think it's much easier again in Austria yeah. than in Slovenia because people are kind of used to that everything is here handmade and natural and cheap. Yeah. So okay. at the beginning, of course, I needed money, so my prices were a bit lower, so everybody started to buy stuff. And now I'm getting, I'm in the business for six years. So I'm trying to put like uh, higher prices and uh, saying no to people. And uh, yeah, they will start to appreciate my work a bit more now, I think. Mm -hmm. And I also have this um, uh, 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 from the minister, uh, this, I don't know, uh, okay. uh, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, uh, accreditation, something like that. Yeah. I'm trying to get the same in Austria. And it's really important to have this extra approvement, yeah. so the approvals, yeah. 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 certificates. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, well, we really try to communicate uh, a lot, yeah. <laughs> and this is what we found out that, like for example, what is Maya showing you is the like tag that we have on each um, on each product, and it's not just about the material and about our organization and about the product. We have also this like small piglet that it's cut to pieces. And uh, we explain the pricing okay. with this piglet because this is really important. Um, like clients, uh, a lot of times ask us, ask us, like, how come that your products are so pricey, mm -hmm. but they you make them out of garbage, you know, out of waste? <laughs> and then we explain over and over again that this is like. Um, the most important thing with do working with waste materials is like you have to invest so much time and work in it. And since we just do things in Slovenia, work is very um, uh, expensive. So yeah. this is why our products are not like cheap. Yeah. <laughs> they come to my shop, my customers, and they are saying like, I'm gonna do it alone. I just came to take photos. Because in Slovenia, yeah, everybody yeah, can do everything alone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They come uh, like in two weeks and they buy it. I always tell them, like, if you're going to do it alone, even if it's a small boat, you're going to spend more uh, time and money to make an exam, to make one or something. So in the end, they really come back and they're like, yeah, better to give it 25 euros <laughs> than to do it alone. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, it's um, because you, you're producing such beautiful objects that are, to the untrained eye look quite straightforward. Mm. Maybe that's like I can go and do it by myself mm. and then realise it. Yeah. No. <laughs> yes. Oh, I, uh, I think because Slovenia is so small and uh, it's about the approach and about consciousness, what is what is price, what is how you are doing this. This is not high in Slovenia still. Yeah. They don't understand and it's uh, this is problem. Mm -hmm. And they always well, I think um, in Austria, they never ask me for a discount, no. and here, here is five euros less, please, today. And it's funny, I tell them, like, go to H&M and ask for five euros discount. Nobody will give you. Because I don't know, I've done it uh, in the house and things like that. This and they said, it's, it's, it's garbage, what you are doing, are you, are you crazy a little bit? And then now it's changing, but this is the thing, I think. It's, it's still not... Yeah, hard. Yeah, it's a long journey, and you know the the UK has, has taken a long time to get to where we are, and it's still we still need to do more to educate. Do you have a question? I have a question for Tina. You said that in Slovenia everybody wants to do it themselves. Do you have any do-it-yourself packages? <laughs> um, I work a lot in Kraterlov, as you know, uh, and uh, they have workshops there, guys. It's in um, it's in uh, Maribor in the city center. And uh, people can come there and learn, but it's again the same uh, that they come, they're really enthusiastic, I'm going to do it alone. They come the second time and then we never see them again. So, yeah, Maybe it's really hard to... packages, you know, just to, to put the parts together. But again, I don't think... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know yeah. my time is like, yeah. Yeah. I wake up at 6 and I work at 9 and I have to do my uh, free time in this 
Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, okay. Ikea. This is not IKEA because when you yeah. are doing alone, it's yeah. another thing. I, than when you are doing like, yeah. uh, I, uh, I, one, and it's hard to find uh, help in Slovenia. Yeah. I have big problems with additional helpers or uh, workers. Yeah. 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 Or work free and then they do the same things, they open the same company doing the same stuff because they can be better than me and stuff, so it's really hard. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of competition. I do a wooden handbag in design, in two days my competition already has it, like the same one. Uh, with the handbags, not, uh, it's not so, yeah, with the bow ties, everybody's doing them. I was the first, but what can I do? It's easy to copy. Uh, with the handbags, it's a bit uh, harder, and with a bicycle, I think I'm the only one, and maybe there are two more to do the bicycles. Yeah. So you have to have a product that nobody can copy, then you can, yeah, yeah. you have to think about that yeah. also. And then when, then when you do things in like um, different companies, subcontractors, it's also very, um, yeah. 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 Problematic yeah. when you put yeah. all the knowledge yeah. there and the products and they have everything and like quite soon it happens that they are making a cheaper version of it. Yeah. Yeah. But still I think it, I was the first one with these products and probably you too or one of the first and people recognize your uh, like your effort and my products are better quality mm. and even the look. Some come to me, oh, I bought the bow tie there, and it's so shit, and now I'm buying yours. Yeah, yes. so in yeah. the end, we win. Yeah. It takes time. Yeah. Again. Okay. Yeah. That's the, that's the biggest challenge, is the copying. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Whether it's done sort of like overseas through digital images or um, through first hand mm -hmm. people buying. There was another question. Yes. I have a question about setting the price. Um, I have a collection of furniture by my own, too. Um, and I never know um, when I put it on the web. Um, there were people from marketing and from companies, uh, design companies, that um, told me not to put the prices on, and other that suggest me, no, you have to have it. But I'm um, now um, seeing that I have very different markets. Uh, mostly they are out of Slovenia. Uh, the clients are not Slovenian, are from UK. I'm from Switzerland, and they're also from um, Dubai now, and they have totally different ways of uh, negotiation about the price. So I'm always uh, scared to put the. Uh, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing not to put the price because it seems that I'm hiding something. And on the other hand, um, uh, I, I, I. Um, I don't want to, to, to lose my value with those clients who, who are um, used to negotiating the price, you know? Yeah, yeah, because it's, it's quite different, that perception of value in all of those three yeah. countries that you've spoken about. Totally different. Um, do you um, make products or do you make to commission? Oh. Uh, meaning, do you... Um, design under somebody else's specification um, or do you produce, say, chairs and there are projects? There designs. I work with a company that produces the, um, we have a small stock, but yeah. work on the, the so price is always the same. Yeah, yeah. I don't change this design so much. Yeah, okay. Um, it, it is quite challenging with the, the, the scope of your different markets and, and I think um, the, I suppose recommendation is could you hit the middle ground meaning prices start from um, and it's sort of you're trying to demonstrate to them that you're solution focused and what are the needs are that you'll pr produce the right price for them and maybe it's to encourage a conversation um, because yes if you're if you're selling direct from the web um, then you do in a way need to put a price on that you can literally ship that product to its destination um, but if you're not sort of selling direct like that you're selling more through negotiation then it's sort of just using the 
the words. There are also shops there, so maybe some yeah. contacts that want to earn money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if I if I sell price, I close this door. Mm -hmm. and yes, it's bigger than they, they get the clients. I cannot. Get to. Yeah. So um, that's yeah. always my. Um, a lot of um, makers have a particular trade price, so they work out what they need for their product. Say it's, I don't know, 200 or 1,000 euros, whatever you need for your product, and then whatever price, market price that they put on top for their country is, is up to them. It, because it, I should imagine it's quite different in Dubai to Switzerland to the UK. Um, so it could be based on um, trade uh, offering people trade prices. So you set the price that you need and then the retail price on top is defined by the country that mm -hmm. is buying that product. That's why I cannot put it on the yeah. 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 But so have you, have you tried have you tried to have prices and then for some time and then not for some time, and you see? No, because uh, I'm afraid that once I do this, I immediately lose all that clients that want to, to, to um, go on, yeah, on the money mm -hmm. on my product. Mm -hmm. I think or they, or they want to negotiate, you know, and I can tell them, okay, you will get 30%, and so oh, I, I'm not interested. And I had uh, one product cheaper in 2016, and people still send me photos of that price. Like, can I still get it uh, mm. this price? They take photos of everything. They have like uh, print screens and they ask <laughs> <screen>. me. <laughs> yeah, mm. it's my customers, but yeah. And it makes it somebody wants to, to buy like um, 50 of them mm. for one. Yeah. Of you know, course, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Then price. it's different really price. Different. Yeah. 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 I think you've been talking a lot about pricing later, and I, I would yeah. sort of base on minimum and maximum order against trade yeah. um, for, for where you're concerned. Mm. That makes the most logical sense. But I'm kind of conscious we're at the end of time, uh, and I'm going to be around all uh, mm. day, just hanging out. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, if you've got questions for me, just, you know, ask away, and mm. I'm mm. sure that likewise for mm. everyone here. Yeah, thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Thank you.